the other day we built this wall behind us and then now we're gonna build that wall that goes right here it's the slanty wall the one we had so many issues with last time but now I think we've got a you know what I have issues with this oh my god again okay, we'll do this <laughs> later we laid out our bottom plate just like we had on the other ones with our studs two foot on center, except this time, because we have a slanted top plate, if we laid out the top plate at the same time, the studs would be slightly off because of the angle. So what we did is we just laid out the bottom plate, then ran a measuring tape from one side to the other, and that's how we ended up laying, up, laying out the top side of our studs so that they're straight up and down. On the last rake wall we framed out, we cut all the flat sides first and then we went around and cut the stud to length by cutting the 11 degree angle on it. This time we cut all the angles first and then went back and cut the flat side that goes against the bottom plate to get the stud at the correct height. I think this worked a little better, but we still had a little bit of issues with stud heights on this one. Why would you later? With four people helping, that wall went up very smoothly. Um, I just have a couple more pieces to finish on the sheathing and then we'll be done with it. The next wall we built was the north wall, which is our 12 foot tall wall, which is our quote unquote literal tall wall. Once again we laid out our 2x6 studs 2 foot on center, and this wall doesn't have any windows in it, so we didn't have to frame any window openings. Now I'm not sure if you've seen me do this before, but to square the walls before we put the sheathing on them, since we're sheathing them first, I draw a tape measure from corner to corner and square it that way, making sure those measurements are e even. Even on the rake walls I do it, I just do it at the 8 foot interval, not at the 8 and then the 12 foot.
four people lifting that 12 foot wall was way easier than even three or the two we had with only the studs. It went up very smoothly, which was nice. Now we just have to build the last wall. We were expecting some rain, so we decided to take a break from building walls and seal up the roof over the first floor. We're using the quote-unquote ZIP 2.0 system just on the roof, not on the sides, which means we're using ZIP tape for the seams and then we're going to go liquid flash all of the nail holes. With the ZIP tape, it's super, super important to roll the tape after you stick it on. It has an acrylic adhesive on it and in, is pressure sensitive, meaning you have to add pressure to it to get it to bond well. And it has to be more pressure than just your hand. That's why we're rolling every piece of tape. And that's why everywhere on the tape, you can see roll tape printed out. So we're using the liquid flash out of a sausage gun. It just gives us a little bigger of a packet to use. And then we're filling every single nail hole with it. Some of our nails were overdriven and then we had a couple spots on the corners where we actually missed the joist completely. So we had to push the nails back out which left us with just a hole. Using this liquid flash, make sure that all of those holes are completely sealed and we won't have any leaks later down the line. The other thing I did with it, as you just saw, is in the corner where the zip tape kind of overlapped. We we're left with a little bit of a fish mouth. So I went through and filled that with the liquid flash as well to make sure that was all sealed up. Okay, so yesterday we put up all the sheathing for <laughs> <that's> the... <laughs> For the east wall for upstairs, um, we put up the sheathing for that connects the first floor to the second floor. We wouldn't film any of that because it's repetitive. Um, but now we just have to finish one little small section on the wall, sheathe the upper section of this wall, and then stand it up. And then. We'll So this is the east rake wall, so it, once again it's slanted from 12 foot to 8 foot. This was the last exterior wall we had to build, and it was the last slanted wall we have to build. And honestly it went the best out of all of the slanted walls. I guess third time's the charm, but it went so smoothly it is the straightest out of all of them, uh, which is nice because it's actually load bearing. And then even the windows, framing out all the windows went really smooth. So it was nice to have a win after framing tons of walls for this house and having them not turn out so good all the time.
And for anyone that's going to freak out over our headers again, yes, we did make them double ply headers that are insulated in the middle with two and a half inches of con or concrete with two and a half inches of foam. Um, I didn't show all of this, so here's a little clip of it. Um, but it is easier for me to insulate the headers and put that second header in when it's standing up. I'm not a big fan of putting it in when it's laying down. Say what you will about that, but that's just what I feel. So we did do it, and we did add all those cripples to the top. And yeah, that's uh, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. The next couple videos are going to be, I think, the interior walls for the second floor and finishing the closet downstairs. And then we have to do the roof for the second floor, which I'm so excited about. But I just want to be over at the same time. Thanks for watching again. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for the next couple of videos because they'll be a little less monotonous. And then once we get the roof on, it'll be a lot of probably more monotonous stuff. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it.